YouTubers, it's me, Steve, and Patty, except for she's working right now. But listen, do us a favor, will you? Hit that like button, smash that button, and uh, subscribe and share with your friends. We love doing these videos, and we're doing them for you. Help our little channel grow, will you? Thanks. Come on, man. Moose. And they don't know what to think of me. Pretty cool. Never know what you're going to find on your walk, huh? Okay. I want to say these are bees for honey harvesting. There's probably about 25 of them sitting out here on the ground. It's part of my morning hike. And obviously you can see, if you look right over here, I'm ringing in a little bit, you can see the bees flying around. Don't want to disturb them, so. But did want to show you, pretty cool. Baby, I have no idea how to respond to this. Can't put that on the no. channel, baby. Uh, you got to talk to your grandbabies. He's all, yeah. Um... No, you didn't get to talk to them either. Okay, so this sucks. Yeah, so don't. Oh, hi. You riders in the storm, right? How you doing? The name is Joe. I don't think I've ever met you. Well, I watch your channel. And the reason you ain't got no one following you is because you ain't got no half-naked young girls running around on your channel. And them, I think they call them coochie girls. Well, okay, well, we are a little older, but, uh, I, you know, I thought about that. Maybe I need to have some... I don't have nobody like that. I I don't understand, uh, but I get your point. Okay, guys, so we ran into a couple of days where we just had a lot of rain and nasty weather down here in our camp in Arizona. And I had to run the generator a lot. Went through uh, a couple of those containers of fuel there because um, we didn't get a lot of sun, and that's one of the things with uh, living down here uh, is yeah a lot of water and uh, that's good because it fills up the aquas or the, the wells or whatnot and I just wanted to show you uh, around the camp a little bit more this is where the water comes in and we have water a couple hours every day but uh, the main point I wanted to bring or bring up was the uh, solar so we had solar, but we didn't have enough solar to uh, power everything. And it's mostly because, you see, I got a couple of panels here on the ground. The ones up on top aren't tilted. The ones on top of the rig aren't tilted. So for about three hours, I get some really good sunshine. And if you come this way with me, and I'll show you what I mean. If you tilt them, uh, quite a bit and you see this guy over here is a prime example of what I'm talking about a lot of people almost everybody does this um, they tilt their uh, solar panels up and then uh, in the winter time you get a lot more or probably 30 or 40 percent more solar so you can see that here on these that I'm walking up to. This is uh, Pierre's uh, camp, and he actually charges up that Tesla right there. But you get an idea what I mean by the solar panels. Don't want to go too far, because I don't want to get into his business. Very nice man, he actually has a YouTube channel. This is a typical camp. Next to me, this is Tom. Uh, He's not here right now, but he's from Idaho. But look at the buildings and stuff that he's been able to do to really make this a nice camp. Haven't seen him much this year. He came and dropped his rig off and then left. And uh, that's what I wanted to share with you right now. I wanted to uh, continue to talk about the solar and the importance of it down here. And we had a couple, like I said, a really rainy, cloudy days, uh, probably about three or four of them in a row. But you can see this guy over here. I don't want to get too close to anybody's camp or 
you know, privacy or whatever, violate their space. But you can see this guy's done an excellent job of tilting the panels up on his rig. And this really helps bring in 30 to 40 percent more solar for your batteries. And that's how you make it because Snowbird West RV Park is basically there's no power here. You either got to have a generator or you got to generate your own. And it's pretty cool. You see, it's got a Starlink there on the back end as well. Really nice setup. And then there's just a bunch of uh, people in here that have similar setups. And there are a couple of guys in here <clears throat> if you want to rent a space here at Snowbird West. I think there's still some available. Then you just go over to the clubhouse on Fridays about 9 o'clock and where everybody comes over and chats and uh, drink some coffee, just a little visiting time. You'll find out there's some really wonderful people. Uh, Daryl, Pierre, uh, a couple of them. I can't speak for them and I can't tell you how much they'll charge, but there are several people in here that are very knowledgeable about solar power and they will uh, help you get it set up. Uh, some of them will probably charge you, which is re they're pretty reasonable. Uh, I think Daryl does it. Um, helps a lot of people put solar up on their rigs. And if you have solar, you got power. And if you got power, you can do just about anything. Now, last night, because of the power that we get, they had a little bit of a, some music playing, a little bit of a get-together party that you could hear all over the camp. And it was quite loud, and uh, it stayed uh, loud for about three or four hours. But then they shut it down about uh, nine o'clock, which was pretty nice because they respect uh, the other people in here and uh, some that have to work and whatnot. But solar is the way to go in this park. And you can see there's a lot of really good people in here. I spent a lot of time and money buying my cargo trailer that we put this year for the first time the solar panels up on top and as I said or I will say here in a little bit uh, we haven't tilted them but we were going to put up another wall across the back of about another 1800 uh, watts of solar slanted and another charge controller which would have brought us up to almost 6,000 watts of solar, uh, which means you, even on a cloudy day, you're probably gonna get enough to uh, keep you going. But we had a lot of uh, clouds, we've had a lot of uh, rain out here in the desert, and we've had a uh, you know a real challenge that so we've had to use our uh, propane to keep us warm at night. And I know some of you said, you know, you're a wussy for complaining about 35 degrees temperature. But uh, if you're used to it being really warm and running around in shorts all the time and then you get hit with weather that barely gets up to 60, it's quite a change. Now, we started this whole thing down in Yuma, Arizona uh, at an LTVA right outside of Yuma, Winter Haven, California. And uh, we moved up here because we have water at our camp and uh, because uh, they give us this whole little area and we don't have to move. What the rain has done, which is kind of cool, is it's knocked down the dust on these roads. So it'll be several more days and the humidity's higher uh, before the dust starts building back up again. But the thing that we liked about Yuma is it seems to be a little bit warmer down there. Uh, I think this morning, it was like 41 down in Yuma, and this morning here it was like 34 degrees. So there's a five or six degree difference in the temperature, which is not a lot, but uh, believe me, you feel it. Okay guys, coming through the back end of Snowbird West, and they've really got some cameras and some security measures here, where it's hard for you to take a rig out this way. Most people just use it to go for a hike, like I just did. And 
and I wanted to show you Coach's site. Starting to see some of the sites in here. This one coming up here with this pad is Coach's site. And you can see you put up some light the light poles that illuminate at night. Looks like his flag got a little wind. Pulled away from the pole. This is his site, and him and Mrs. Coach have done a really good job of clearing it out and cleaning it up. It looks really good. Squirrel. Usually parks his rig right there. some medical issues the, this year. Yeah, um, it's been a rough year. It's been a rough year, but we both uh, are extremely grateful for our health because we pulled through it, right? We did, it's so been great. So, it's a, give it a thumbs up. It's a great year, but there's we're looking thumb. forward to 2024. Oh, it slipped. Oh, there's my thumb. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. But we're looking forward to a great 2024. And, um, well, I got some presents today from my company. Yeah. A nice sweater and a, a, backpack. And a backpack. So, But it's a great way to start the new year. Um, my goals for the year are to uh, lose the 20 pounds. That's always the hardest to lose. I lost about 40 last year or this year. And so hopefully we'll lose 20 next year. So. Awesome. Okay. Onward and upward. See you next year, guys. All right. Bye all. Bye.